You made in two years $392,902. What's up guys, welcome to episode one of my real estate investment series. My name is Armand Violi. I am a licensed real estate agent and advisor with the company Other Street Advisors. We specialize in commercial properties, particularly the manufactured home park and RV park industry. That's our website right behind us. As far as experience, we've done as a team combined about $2 billion worth of transactions growing every single day. This series is really going to focus on all the different ways of investing in real estate. Eventually, I'm going to go over residential real estate, Airbnb, retail, office buildings, all that. But for the most part, I'm going to be focusing on manufactured home community because that's what I specialize in. So today's episode, we're gonna go over the basics of analyzing a commercial deal. So a few key things on why commercial real estate is so lucrative and better than any other investment vehicle is, one, you have the ability to leverage your money. Just the ability to leverage your money, you get to have such higher returns for the amount of money you can put into it. I mean, interest rates are so low right now, you can get even a house, you can finance a house for close to 3% interest rate. So for every $100,000, you're paying $3,000 to borrow 100. It gives you the ability to have such higher cash on cash returns while investing in the stock market. I mean, 10% returns long term is really good. In commercial real estate, 10% returns yearly is is easy. Like, I mean, it's consistent that people are getting IRRs in the teens. The second major advantage of real estate is cash flow. Pretty much you get to have a paycheck every single month. If you're buying a property right, it should be cash flowing even after debt and you are getting high enough returns that you are getting a decent sized paycheck every single month. That helps mitigate risk in case things go wrong with the property. You have cash flow to help pay for those problems. The third thing is tax advantages. You have the ability to defer taxes with real estate unlike anything else. For example, let's say you increase the value of your property and you sold the property. You're going to, have to pay capital gains tax on that. You get to put it in a 1031 exchange and then you can reinvest the money and never have to pay taxes on it as long as you just keep reinvesting in real estate. Or because of, again, leverage and the ability to borrow money on real estate, let's say you increase the value of your property, you want to pull your money out of it, you get to refinance it. When you refinance it, you, you are not taxed on that money because it was borrowed money from the bank, not realized income. I mean, those are three main things. We'll go in depth. We'll just keep it super basic this episode. All right, so terms you need to know. The first and probably most important term is net operating income, NOI. So the NOI is net operating income. It's a calculation used to analyze the profitability of income generating real estate investments. NOI equals all revenue from the property minus all reasonable. All right, pretty much. So NOI is all the income from your property after all the expenses how the business produces your noi is at the bottom after the expenses another one is a lot of people don't really talk about it but gross income the income before expenses i like to bring that up because right now there's so many especially if you're on real estate investment facebook groups or you're just seeing a lot of deals that are marketed out there there are a lot of from what i'm seeing is a lot of like contract flippers and wholesalers and these wholesalers they don't really understand how to underwrite they're just trying to like market the property say it's so much better oh your cap rate's so high 15 20 percent cap rate on some because they don't actually understand how to write the expenses in they think that their expense ratio is 20 percent when really it should be operating at around 45 percent. so that basically gives you a false noi which is pretty much bs the second term you need to know is cash on cash returns. Cash on cash returns is a rate of return often used in real estate transactions that calculates the cash income earned on the cash invested in a property. So what that basically means is, let's say you buy a million dollar property, your down payment was 200,000. Now you take the net operating income, you subtract the debt payment from that, and now you get basically your cash on cash returns. The cash on cash returns is the percentage based off that 200,000 you put in, not the million dollar big chunk, just what are the returns off your 200,000 that you put into the property? Those are your cash on cash returns. Next one is cap rate. The cap rate is used in the world of commercial real estate to indicate the rate of return that is expected to be generated on a real estate investment property. This measure is computed based on the net income which the property is expected to generate and is calculated by dividing the net operating income by the property asset value and is expressed as a percentage. So what the cap rate pretty much means is what are your percent returns per year assuming you bought the entire property in cash? So if you bought a million dollar property and the net operating income of that million dollar property was 70,000, 
your cap rate is 7%. Now next is internal rate of return, AKA IRR. Internal rate of return is a metric used in capital budgeting to estimate the profitability of potential investments. The internal rate of return is a discount rate that makes the net present value of all cash flows from a particular project equal to zero. IRR calculations rely on the same formula as NPV does. Basically, that is a lot of fancy words for your IRR is usually set over an exit plan of, let's say, 10 years to make it simple. You buy it, year one, you cash flow X amount percent. Year two, X amount percent. Three, four, five, six, seven, you cash flow X amount percent. And then when you exit on the 10th year, you might be getting, let's say you're getting 10% returns per year. And then when you exit the property on the 10th year, you end up getting a huge percent return on the sale. Let's say it's 100%. So let's say it's 10% return each year, and then uh, you double your money on the exit. That's a total of 200%, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 plus 100, 200%. Divide that by 10 years, your IRR was 20%. I'll break it down. It sounds like confusing. I'm gonna break it down on the whiteboard for you guys. Next, let's go over a basic analyzation of an investment property. All right, guys, so we're gonna do a basic breakdown on numbers. Let's say we got a mobile home park that we bought for $1 million. Million dollar mobile home park. It is 40 lots, AKA 40 units. The way mobile home parks work is you have lot rentals. The income you make is from renting out the lots that you have. Let's just say this has 40 lots. The income you make is from renting out those 40 lots. The lot rent is, let's go with $300 a month. So you got a lot rental of $300 a month. That gives you the ability to make a potential income of 40 lots times $300 a month times 12 months equals $144,000 in potential income. But you're not gonna make that much money because you have to factor in vacancies, evictions, stuff like that. Let's just say it's $144,000 of potential income. And this particular park is running at 85% occupancy. Let's say it's a little mismanaged. They haven't rented out every single lot. It's at 85% income times 0.85. That gives you an actual income of $122,400. Let's just say it's at an expense ratio, a typical expense ratio on this. Let's play it safe. Assume that they don't have it as efficient as possible, but very still a realistic, well-run property. We're gonna run it at 50% expense ratio. We're gonna eventually get this down, but for now, 50% times 0 0.5. So that's all the expenses, management costs, repairs and maintenance, property taxes, whatever, water, trash, utility bills that gotta be in there. That'll give you times 0.5, a net operating income, $61,200. Net NOI is $61,200. The cap rate on that, we would divide 61,200 by a million, divided by one, two, three, one, two, three. 0.0612, so the cap rate on this property that we bought it at is a 6.12% cap rate. Now to explain the cap rate as we were talking about earlier, if you bought this property for $1 million in cash, no debt, no leverage, you would be getting a 6.12% return per year. Now, this is the power of leverage that we're gonna talk about. Let's take all this, we'll keep this on the board to make it simple, to buy this. Let's just say the bank will give you an 80% loan to value ratio. So 80% loan to value, the bank's gonna loan you 800,000 on the $1 million. 1 million minus 800,000, $200,000 that you must come up with as a down payment. We're gonna leave out closing costs and all that just to keep the numbers really simple. There's still gonna be closing costs, inspections, other stuff like that. But let's just say for the sake of simplicity, $200,000 is your down payment. Now the terms of this loan that you're gonna do is worst case scenario, you're probably gonna get two years interest only. What that means is for two years, you're only paying the interest on the property, not paying down the principal, and then the entire principal becomes due at the end of the term. Interest rates right now, let's just say you're going and you get 4% interest rate. To make this simple, 4% on the money you borrowed, 4% on $800,000 is $832,000 in interest payment for the entire year. 32, one, two, 
three. Now we're gonna calculate our cash on cash returns. So what is the returns on the actual cash we put into the property? We invested a total of $200,000 out of pocket. We didn't invest a million dollars. So we gotta subtract our debt costs, the interest payments from the net operating income and that will give us our cash on cash returns, AKA the returns on the actual cash we put in the property. $61,000 minus $32,000 gives us 61,200 minus 32, $29,200. Our cash on cash returns, we would divide this by the money we put in the property. Divided by 200,000 is 0.146. So our cash on cash returns on the $200,000 is a 14.6% return on your money yearly. You're making 14.6% return on your money because of the power of leverage. And now also the cash flow on this, you're probably gonna pay little to no taxes, writing off your property taxes, depreciation, a lot of things. So we'll keep it simple. This is where the real money is made. Now you're not just gonna buy this park, you're gonna add value to the park. You're gonna put in a thing called sweat equity. It's where you put in work in the park. You're gonna add value to the park by two things. Trimming off the fat on the expenses. Instead of running this at a 50% expense ratio, you're gonna find out ways to save money, make it a little more efficient. You're gonna improve the management because you go in there and you know how to run a park professionally. You're gonna clean the place up a little bit. You're gonna raise the rents. Maybe when you bought the park, that down the street, there is two or three parks in the same city and they're all charging 330 bucks a month for rent. So you know that you're below market rate also, you're gonna improve the park, improve the vacancy of it, and you're gonna improve the expenses on it. But let's just say you went from $300 to 315 per month. On top of that, you filled it to 95% instead of 85%, and you brought your expense ratio down from 50% to 45% because you're running it a little more efficient now. So you only raise it from 300 to $315 a month. There's still room for increase the next few years. That could be your selling point. Now this is where you make the real money on the property. The cash flow is all great. The value add is where the real money comes in. $315 a month times 40 units times 12 months, $151,200 in potential income. You're at 95%. So times 0.95, $143,640. You're running this at 45% expense ratio. So we're gonna subtract 45% from it times 0.55. Gives us net operating income of $79,002. Let's say the market's dictating a six cap. You bought this as a 6.12 cap, you improved it. You're gonna go bring it to market at pretty much the exact same cap rate. You're gonna divide this net operating income by the cap rate. The market's dictating a 6% cap rate for this particular example. So we're gonna divide this net operating income by 0 0.06. Divided by 0 0.06 gives you $1,316,700. The new value of the park is $1,316,700. Let's talk about the cash on cash returns for year two. Your cash loan is $79,000. You subtract your interest payments again, $79,002. Subtracting $32,000 in interest payments, $47,002 in returns divided by 200,000 to get the percentage, 23.5% cash on cash returns. When we sell it by the end of year two, this is the percent that we just made on the money. I mean, this is the amount of money we just made on just a $200,000 investment. This is why real estate is so lucrative and why commercial real estate is the best investment vehicle in my opinion and the opinions of many others. Let's get rid of all of this. You're at one million for a purchase price. Total invested $200,000. Year one, you made 29,200 in cash flow. Year two, you made 47,000 in cash flow. On the exit of the property, you have 300, 16,700 in profit. In total, you made in two years, $392,902. That's what you made 
over two years after you sold the property. This cash flow, you probably deferred taxes through depreciation, etc. Instead of paying capital gains tax on this, you put it into something called a 1031 exchange. 1031 exchange gives you X amount of time to pick a new investment to reinvest all of this money, deferring your taxes. You do have to pay eventually, unless you die. You're gonna take this total amount of money, plus your original 200,000 that you already had invested in the property that you got back, and you're gonna buy your next deal and do it all over again. I'm gonna break down our actual deals to give you real numbers. This is just a theoretical to show you guys how lucrative commercial real estate can be in the basics to analyze an investment property. Please like and subscribe. Right here is a residential real estate video. Right here is my mixed martial arts related videos. Contact info in the bio. Please leave a comment. Thanks guys, peace.